So, Charlie, I advise you to start well. You can't really run. So, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Oh, Jesus. So, you done prayed on the cousin. Now, you're praying on the other cousin. Charlie, is that what we doing now? You didn't had the cousin and forced yourself on the cousin. Now you working on the other cousin. Thank God for Marlena. Thank God for Ben that they was able to stop you in time. Because you really are a serial rapist. Like you really want to encourage this woman. Like you look good. Like I never experienced this type of love before. Like I was never in love like this. I never had a girlfriend. I never even much made it past the cupcake stage. But I want you. I want to experience this with you. Oh, Charlie, I will give you that. You really are a charmer. I will give you that one. You're a charmer or whatever. But Charlie, you should have known something was up. When somebody come interrupting y'all getting ready to make love, you should have been running out the door right then and there. If that wasn't a sign for you that things was not going to end the way you thought it was going to end, you should have been running out the door, tackling Ben, knocking him down, and exiting at the stage left, and finding your flight, jumping in the car, or getting somewhere farther than, than, than Salem. Then when being finally did let you go, you had the audacity and the nerves to go back to the scene of crime. First of all, I didn't agree with you, you know, having your whole hostage situation in your apartment. I thought people with common sense, I have that, you know, farther away from them where you can't be located, not in, a, not in your apartment that you're renting. You holding your mother hostage in your apartment on pills that you then drugged her with. Then on top of it, why are you so obsessed with Claire? Why Claire? Because she an easy target for you. I am grateful, though, that you didn't get to put your hands on her the way you thought you was going to put your hands on her. Like I said, I'm grateful for being, for finding the right door, because y'all getting ready to get started. And like I said, Claire didn't already been through enough. She didn't seen enough. She didn't did enough padded sales. She don't need no more. People calling her crazy. She This probably would have broke her core. This probably would have killed her. So I'm glad you didn't get the opportunity, opportunity to, to, to touch her that way, even though you did kiss her or whatever. And another thing I don't understand, Marlena, why can't you just go ahead and warn that, warn that girl without saying, you know, I think he the one that raped Allie. You know, you might want to stay away from him. You know, he's dangerous. You know, he might seem innocent and sweet. He might be your boyfriend. Like, you could have gave that woman a clue in the hand, and I'm pretty sure she would have tagged along and, you know, detected the clue, went with the clue and said, oh, that's why you want me to stay away. Why Steve and John got to explain this to Claire? when you are a whole psychiatrist with a license and you can do the explaining better than John and Steve can never do. I didn't understand that. You could have told that woman enough to prove that, you know, Char Charlie, Chucky, Chuck <laughs> is a dangerous person you might want to stay away from. I'm just saying, Marlene, you got the whole psychiatrist and you got the whole office. I'm pretty sure you could explain that to that girl, to not scare her, but to also let her know why you suspect this and why you think Charlie is a bad idea for her and why she should stay away from him. Like, come on, Marlena. I didn't like that beating around the bush you was doing. Like, normally when you beat around the bush, you let them know but not really telling them what's going on. It's just like you was feeding Claire with a long-headed spoon and you wanted her to figure out what you was putting down. Well, you could have easily explained to her why you suspect this of Charlie and why she should stay away from him. I mean, come on now, Marlena, now. The way you was explaining that, I didn't quite understand it. I, I, I'm gonna need for you to stay away from Charlie. Yeah, yeah, Charlie is dangerous, and um, yeah, I, I'll let Steve and John explain it to you when they get back. But I need you to go get yourself together and come back with me. 
If I was Claire, I'd be jumping at the bed wondering, what are you talking about, lady? I'm not understanding what you're putting down. You could explain to me, you could explain this to me in another way other than, look, I need you to get your things, stay away from Charlie. It's just like you treating her as your child. If I'm with Claire and this could dick a man, they can offer to make love to my boyfriend, and here come you and Ben interrupting that, I'll be on edge too. I'll be like, Claire, like, what is going on? Why, why y'all bothering me? I'm doing what I want to as a grown lady. I'm 18. You can't tell me who I can and can't hang around. You can warn me like y'all did with Jan, but as for telling me who I can and can't hang around, you got no longer control of that. You can kick me out your house or whatever, let me move up, move out on my own, okay, fine. But I didn't like how Marlena was explaining that to her. Like, it was like you treating her as, she, as she's one of your patients, and you trying to tell her, and where well, you really ain't trying to explain to her in a few words or less. Like I said, a little bit more explanation would have been suffice, but you want to beat around every bush you saw and try to hide behind it and make her find you, try to figure out what bush you was hiding behind. Like, well, you could have just flat out told her, look, Charlie is dangerous. He done did some things in his past. It involves Allie. Let's, you know, stay away from him. That's all I know for now, that he's dangerous and involves Ellie Case. You might want to, you know, avoid him and stick, stay away from him or whatever. Like, come on, Marlena. I was expecting a whole lot more from you. And Charlie, I really don't understand why you would want to stick around in the town, stick around a town why somebody interrupted y'all getting ready to have sex? Why would you want to stay explaining anything to Claire and her family? Why would you want to stick around? When danger first strikes, people will be trying to get away from the fire. Not stick around and try to, and try to find out an excuse like, Oh, it wasn't me. Oh, it wasn't me. Oh, that wasn't me. I didn't do anything. Oh, you got the wrong person. I'm an innocent man. I'm suing you. Like, ain't nobody going to stick around for that. I bet you if that was anybody else, they'll say, I got to get out of town. I got to go. I'm sorry, Claire is a buzz. Let me go on and continue my rapist plan with somebody else that you know that's not well connected to the woman I already raped. But let me go and find me another place to, you know, call my own other than this place because it's not working out for me. I I, I didn't understand why you, would want, why you would want to stick around and why you would want to try to explain yourself with their really no explaining yourself. All they need is your DNA. And that's going to explain where that baby come from and why Allie thought it was Trip, but it really wasn't Trip. And I'm glad she got that interaction with Trip she got today. I was glad and grateful for that. At the same time, I was scared to say, oh, Lord. Here come Allie again, in a friend where she shouldn't belong. Here she go asking this boy questions she don't want to know the answer to. Here she go again, you know, doing stuff she shouldn't be doing. Trying to, you know, doing stuff she shouldn't be doing or saying stuff she shouldn't be, you know, doing and understanding all that. So I was a little confused about it when it first happened. Then when Tripp explained it to her, then she kind of, kind of broke down her guard when, you know, Trip told her, look, I know you suspect this me. I'm not putting the blame on nobody else. There's a cousin out there who shares DNA with me. They could have been the one that raped you, not me. And then when he told her John was also involved in this situation, that's when she let her guard down and she decided to entertain Trill. I guess the John thing was a big piece of the puzzle for her. So then she put two and two together and realized, and I'm not understanding from the jump, Claire. I mean, um, you girl, Allie. Is Trip the one that raped you? Wouldn't y'all be scared, terrified, wouldn't want to be nowhere around him, be scared to be around him, anywhere near him. You'll be running, hollering, screaming at the next exit, or turning around, running to that exit. You do none of that with Trip. 
But when you are around Charlie, it feels like you already know him. Ain't no need to explain to him to me. He seems so weird. He seemed like I know him for somewhere. I heard somebody say this. He looked like I didn't see him before. And I don't know where. Like, how you having these interactions with somebody you claim you don't know and you just not mean? But when it comes to Char, I mean, with Trip. You give me no type of this the man that write me, this the man that you know sexually sexually assaulted me, and this is his baby. You give me none of that with Trip, but you scream that with Charlie. So I'm glad you got your rule of Wakely. Like I said, you gonna be apologizing. I see Nicole took up a Kayla spot with jumping at the bed and getting ready to get angry at Rave. I see she then started and then it's mixed up with Eric ain't coming home. And Christmas and New Year's was long gone. I know he should be home by now. But then again, this is a story now that we already know Eric can't come back no time soon. He might come back, you know, maybe somewhere down the line. But we gonna pretend like the cold still waiting on Erica. We know that's really not true when we know the person that plays Eric stays in movies, Lifetime, and you know he lives on Lifetime and stay doing movies. He ain't been on so many Tyler Perry movies and plays. I mean movies that yeah, it's not even much funny. So we already know Nicole waiting on Eric. That's kind of a crazy storyline. And then not to mention the whole Alley thing. That's putting home Edge even more. Um... What else I was going to talk about? Oh, 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 oh. The draws are already kicking in. Ava already losing her mind. Rafe goes and rescue her. She freaking out, thinking it's Charlie, thinking Charlie, well, thinking Trip dead, but Trip ain't really dead. He's somewhere around Salem getting ready to come to the hospital to confirm that he's not really dead. But Ava really don't know any of this because she on whatever drug Charlie then gave her and she losing her mind and she don't know whether she coming or going. Kayla being in the room. <laughs> Kayla being in the room with her, and Kayla trying to help her. She want no parts of Kayla. Um, Rafe had to convince her somehow that look, I'm I'm friendly. I'm here to rescue you. I'm here to save you. Um, ain't nobody here to harm you, Charlie. God knows where. So I'm here to save you. I'm here to rescue you. Rafe ended up finding Charlie when he went back to his apartment. Uh, we got Steve and John coming back from Philly. John and put two and two together and realized that Charlie that Angelo is speaking of, yeah, that's Charlie in Salem, and he's dating Claire. So let me put a bug out for Kayla, I mean for um, Marlena, to tell Claire to stay away from him. Steve didn't believe it from the jump, so John, John had to tell Steve that, look, I didn't meet this Charlie. He came home for Christmas, New Year's, Christmas and New Year's. Um, Bell and, Bell and Sean Buss went in. I know this person. This person look familiar. He wear glasses. He geeky. He a nerd. This basically is the Charlie everybody talking about, especially in where Angelo talking about. I already didn't met him. I already thought he was nice or whatever, but now he's a rapist. So I'm glad that it's coming out. Rave, please arrest him. Do not let him take advantage of you because trust me, he right now he on the prowl and that's the last thing he need. Um that's all that happened with them today. Now I hope after um Lonnie and Eli they had a successful pregnancy, they had a successful delivery, labor and delivery, and delivered the babies, the twins. I hope 
nobody, cause that Julia, the baby, they, I hope ain't nobody trying to steal that girl babies. Come on now. Heaven, they done been through enough already. I really hope and pray nobody trying to steal that girl babies all over again, cause that will really suck. After all this time, she was concerned, nervous, scared, thought she would never have a chance to be a mother again, and she, getting, and she ended up with not one blessing, but two blessings, and not somebody already circling the babies. I'm hoping that was a nurse and not nobody else trying to be funny. I hope and pray that Eli and Lonnie don't got no enemies that we know of, that we know of. But then again, you know the job she do. You never know who might be circling trying to get one up on them. So we have to wait and see. Um. Valerie, I didn't kind of like your reaction. Need to like. Why was you surprised and shocked that Eli named the baby Julia or Jules? Why are you so surprised and shocked? You thought he was going to name the baby after you? Remember, you done had all the time with Eli up until now. Let that man do what he want to do with his other side of the family. Why is the baby name hitting you so hard? Like, come on now. I, the way you, you was like, you named the baby after Julie, what you and then like why not? That's that boy child. Why he can't name why they can't name that baby after Julie? We don't always get along with Julie, but I mean that's still your grandchild and your grand your granddaughter, but why would you care that the baby name is Julia or Jules? why was you so shocked about that? When you basically kept that man away from that side of, the, of his family, why would you be so surprised and shocked that he named the baby there? I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little concerned. Why, why, why would that bother you or concern you? Long as they healthy, long as they live, and long as they breathe, then that should be your only concern. And you getting to know the two twins. Why is the baby name hurting you? Like it, it look like it hurt at your soul. We know you still don't like Julie, but that's besides the point. You can't tell that man what he can and can't name his baby. I mean, just cause he didn't say Valerie or Val or you know Valentine, that's okay. You'll get the next time around. I mean, why was that hitting you so hard? Hard that he named the baby dad. Like, it's like you got pissed on yourself when he said that. It looked like you saw a ghost. It's like a ghost came and said, boo, in front of your face, and you were... I, I didn't understand that at all. Like, why? W w w shouldn't you be happy that the baby happy, happy and healthy? That you're able to take them home, that you're able to help raise them, that you're happy to get to know them, that you get to learn their little personalities, that you get to spend time with the children. And I keep keeping you away from the kids, so why would a name hurt you that bad? Do you really hate Julie that much that she named the baby out there? I'm going to leave that alone, but you need to get over yourself. I mean, Valerie, at this point, you need to get over yourself and whatever, like, I don't know what your problem is, but get over yourself. But anyways, though, y'all, that was the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of y'all night, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.